There will be a lot of overlap because this is really what has been on my heart and in my mind and right before my eyes for many, many months for the last year or two. And actually for the last 25 years or more, 25 years ago, next month, we'll, uh, we will celebrate the anniversary of the most significant human covenant I have ever made in my life with Kimberly Kirk Hahn now. But it was around that time in my life that I discovered the profound significance of covenant making and the profound difference between covenant making and contract making. Because I think most Americans assume that contracts and covenants are the same. I know I did. And it took me years of study and prayer and reflection and learning before I recognized the difference. And then I began to recognize what difference the difference makes. Because it's enormous. Just without going into detail, when I first came to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ as my personal Savior and Lord, I was a troubled teen. I had just come out of juvenile court. I was trying my best to extricate myself from juvenile delinquency, but I discovered I didn't have the power within myself to do that. I needed a power that came from on high. And Christ came into my life. He took up his throne. He became the Lord of lords, the king of kings. He became the source of my strength slowly. It took time. It took struggle. And I, I ended up falling many times before I found more and more stability. But at that first period of my life where I had the grace of conversion, a personal relationship with Jesus Christ was really what it was all about. And the way I studied the Bible I came to the conclusion with the help of my teachers that this stuff called sacraments, this stuff called liturgy, was, quite frankly, superstitious. In fact, at times I thought it bordered on magic, if not even sacrilege. Why would you have all of this ritual complicate the simple beauty of a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? Now, obviously, I'm going to change my mind, and I'm also going to explain to you why, but I want to say something before I explain the changes that took place in my thinking, and that is a personal relationship is vital. Nothing I say today, nothing you'll hear this week, will in any way relativize the importance or trivialize the vitality of a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. A personal relationship with Jesus Christ is what we're talking about. I just want to clarify what kind of personal relationship we have. Because a personal relationship is something that I have with the guy who lives next door, though I don't know him all that well. He's a hairdresser. He's a fine man. But we don't have all that much in common, but we do have a personal relationship. Likewise, the garage mechanic down to the BP station, the bottom of the hill. I've got a personal relationship with Bill. But it isn't the same kind of thing I have with Kimberly or the kids or even, I hope, with many of you throughout this week. We will enter into something much more. It's that much more that I want to explore. It's that much more that I came to discover the hard way. Because I didn't just disagree with Catholics, I opposed them. But at the same time, I was much more committed to Scripture than I was committed to anti-Catholicism. And so I basically made a pledge to our Lord, I will go wherever your word leads me. I will believe whatever you teach me from your word, and I will try my best to do whatever it is you command me with the help of your grace, with your Holy Spirit. And as I began reading through the Bible in high school, I made a discovery that it's more than a person relationship with Jesus Christ. It's a covenant. It's a covenantal bond. And God, it seems, was never content to just simply leave us in some generic personal relationship. The language of the covenant is the language of the Bible. 
Now, you wouldn't be here if you didn't know words like this were going to be emanating from my mouth because I, I talk a lot about covenant, but that's because God's word teaches so much about covenant. The Bible is a covenant document. That's not just my opinion. That's an empirical fact that an atheist could see. Why? Because it's divided into the Old Testament and the Old, the New Testament. And testament is just another word for what? Covenant. And in fact, testament is a Latin term that attempts to translate a much more biblical concept. Berit in Hebrew, diatheke in Greek, is typically understood and translated far better as what? Covenant. Old covenant, new covenant. So the Bible is a covenant book. God is a covenantal Lord. History is a covenantal plan and the personal relationship that he wants to establish and maintain and grow and develop with each and every one of us is a covenant. So, having stated what might be obvious to most of us, we have to ask the question, what difference does a covenant make? Well, again, just to summarize quickly, a covenant differs from a contract in a very profound way. Just a very simple description of the difference is this, that in a contract, you exchange goods and services. Property changes hands. This is yours and now that is mine because we made a promise. I gave you my word. You made a promise. You gave me your word. And the proof of that word was the signature that I might have attached to a contract and your name that you signed. So the name of the human parties is the sign or the signature of a contract. It's a glue that holds. But in a covenant, you've got something much more than the exchange of property. A covenant has to begin with a contract. A covenant can't get started without promises. But a covenant goes far beyond, not against, but beyond a contract. Because more than simply exchanging goods and services, it's the exchange of lives. I am yours and you are mine. That's the language of a covenant. And ancient Israelites understood that far better than modern Americans. And so it behooves us, if we're going to try to build our lives upon Scripture and tradition, upon the Word of God as Catholic Christians, that we understand this difference and figure out what difference it makes. So in a covenant, lives are exchanged. I am yours and you are mine. And that also involves property, doesn't it? You know, when I got married... I didn't just give myself to Kimberly. She didn't just give herself to me. Our bank accounts also became one. And so also our, our, our holdings as meager as they were. And so it is the exchange of property, but even more the exchange of persons. It is making promises, but even more than that, it is what? Swear.